Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the escape beat. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of why you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can can and a can can, a can can, a can can, and a wheel. Now we're off to. Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming back to the channel. I actually found the video once again, or the audio, and we can hear the conclusion of what Kanye was basically saying why he made the t-shirt of the white lives matter and um how it uh basically affected him seeing um a different race wearing something like that We have to follow our heart. What um, did you want it to, to express when you do the, the White Life Matters t-shirts? You know, at a certain point, it felt like I saw white people wearing shirts that said Black Lives Matter, like they were doing me such a favor by having a t-shirt that reminded me that my life mattered, like I didn't already know that. So I thought it, I thought I returned the favor and let white people know that, hey, your life matters too. It's sort of like when random people will see the documentary and the documentary was, you know, the third chapter basically was saying, hey, we all love Kanye, but sometimes you got to turn the camera off on him. Meaning, like, don't listen to everything. Yes, we know he's a genius, but feel free to put him on mute whenever he doesn't align with what we're telling you. And so sometimes I'll see people at a fashion show, and they say, we saw this documentary, and they say, are you good? And I'll say, are you good? So it's like, black lives matter, white lives matter. And it's just simple as that. Why do you say Black Lives Matter is a scam? Well, because it's proven. They have people who end up taking money from it. I mean, this documentation is, is out there. And just as black people, we're going to need more than just a T-shirt and a $6 million home. We need what was promised to us. Much like how we never received our 40 acres and a mule, and that puts us in a position where we feel we have to abort our children to the point where there are more black babies aborted in New York City than born at this point. Uh, it was similar to uh, at The Gap, they promised stores. At Adidas, they promised stores, and they didn't do what they promised. They felt like they could disregard what was promised. What's your position with all those companies? Because they made a lot of money with you. Uh, Adidas made a lot of money with you. Gap made a lot of money with you. Uh, what's your relation with them? Because you call out and you, 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 you talk about them on social media, and I would like to understand. Everything is not about money. When people say they made a lot of money, what does that mean that it's right? If people are selling crack, and killing people with crack, does that mean that crack is right? If people are selling their bodies, does that mean that that's right? Does that mean that that's dignified? Does that mean that that's godly? These things are not dignified and they're not godly. With me, as the leader that I am, I need to talk to the heads eye to eye and we have a respectful partnership, like in this situation. Mm. And this is possible, but they have to start with a level of respect. And with Adidas, they're going to have to show us that respect. There's simply a partnership. You know, I'm not under Adidas, or Adidas doesn't have me, as we've heard people put it before. And 
you said something really, really strong and really emotional about Virgil, rest in peace. Yes. I would like to understand. I mean, this takes a lot to unpack. It's like the funeral has never ended. I wasn't allowed to speak at Virgil's funeral, and there's a lot of feelings with that. You know, Virgil came in to design as my assistant, and we worked on any and everything. We could work on shoes together. We could work on constructing buildings together because he is an architect. He was an architect. Uh, and, uh, and we worked with Louis Vuitton. And Bernard Arnault offered me a deal after the Yeezy season one show uh, to support the Kanye West brand because we had had four billion impressions and it was the biggest fashion show of all time, like bigger than Victoria's Secret, bigger than Chanel. Uh, so Bernard Arnault had a meeting with me and looked me eye to eye and shook my hand and said, I'm going to do the Kanye West line. And then Alexander Arnault went and I said, okay, I'm going to go to Adidas. Can I have a signed contract that this is happening? Because I need to tell Adidas to indemnify the apparel because Louis Vuitton is going to do it now. And they'd obviously be a stronger apparel partner because of their factories and their knowledge than Adidas would be for clothes at the level of clothes that I do. And uh, Alexander Arnaud said, my father never goes back on his word. Well, three months after that, they dropped the deal at the board. Uh, I did Yeezy season two, and we didn't have a way to produce it. We didn't have a production partner. So we just made it, but never produced it because we didn't have Adidas and Louis Vuitton had dropped it at the board, as Alexander Arnaud put. Then on the third uh, season, we took over Madison Square Garden. We played the St. Pablo album and we took over the world. We had Naomi Campbell there. Um, this is the first time that we showed uh, Oh, no, we've shown in theater, theaters before, but we showed the show in movie theaters also. So even Nico, that's documenting my life right now, his first time he went to a fashion show was in a movie theater where he saw season three. And we took over the world. Um, we dropped the album and... I was there. Oh, you was there? Oh, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. It was a beautiful moment when the Vanessa Beecroft installation, the tarp came off on the end of ultralight beams. And it would be beautiful to show that moment right now. Certain things that I'm talking about, when we edit this in this format, we can show the moments. I want to show the faith, that part. Okay, so then we go to season four and the show started late. And this is a beautiful season. The designs that we put in the middle of the grass at the Louis Kahn Island end up becoming the inspiration for Skims, which is now worth four or five billion dollars. That collection started an hour late and the entire fashion world destroyed it. We were feeling sad about that. A couple weeks later, Kim got robbed in Paris. Then I was going back on tour. We ended the tour and I told my manager at that time, Scooter Braun, I need to go to Japan I'm exhausted. He said, you need to make some more money. We went on another leg of the tour. And four days in, I passed out from exhaustion. And I went to the hospital. And ever since that day, every day, someone can call me crazy, which is another way of saying, turn the camera off on them. Uh, the people that were supposed to be, that were friends of mine, they still put it in the press. They didn't have to write in the press that I was going to the hospital. I have a lot of friends that went to the hospital. But if you put that stigma on somebody, it's like, it's like a mental me too. It's like where someone looks at you and they have to look at like, or, they, or just a random person like can come up to you and ask you if you're good. Like J-Lo can ask me at the Kardashian Christmas party, you good? I just want to make sure you good. Right. So sometimes people call me classes when I talk about money and I say, yo, I bring up money 
not I respect money and the construct of it inside of this game of life, but I also bring it up to say, well, if I'm so crazy, why do I have the ability to make so much more of the thing that you care the most about? They say you're crazy into, until you're right. All right, so let's go back to the moment of the hospital. Now I'm in the hospital, and we come out of the hospital, and we do a collection five, which they praise because we put jeans and graphics in the collection, um, which sometimes I feel like graphics, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't. Uh, then we went into around the time of the season six collection, and ASAP Rocky asked me to come to Berlin with him to work on the album. And we came out there, and it was me, Tremaine, Rocky, Jean Tuto, and Virgil. And Virgil told me, hey, you know, I'm thinking about going to Versace or to Louis Vuitton. And, uh, you know, I said, okay, that's good. So then Virgil goes to be the men's designer at Louis Vuitton, and I go and we have this moment of this hug. You know, no one knows that I have been offered the deal by Bernard Arnault. No one knows that I, the, the deal was pulled. I used to call myself the Louis Vuitton Don. So when Virgil was at the house, there was a lot of pain and jealousy that I was dealing with. And also, I would sometimes get mad because I would feel certain designs could be better. You know, Martin Rose is one of, but a lot of people consider to be the best designer on the planet. And she was the head of Balenciaga men's and then she left and is doing her own collection. So it was in order to start Martin Rose, you had Demna. I mean, that Martin Rose was starting at Balenciaga when they went to, went to men's, it was Martin Rose and Demna in the same room. That's part of the reason why Balenciaga is so powerful uh, today. And obviously, everyone knows that Demna's my favorite designer. Everyone knows that Ricardo Tichy is the highest level of design. Um, and um, so there was a lot of pain and trauma and unpacking in the idea because I would go back to Calabasas with no production and I would have sweatshirts. That's what we had. And Virgil had the access to the house and we were never able to do a collaboration because I think because they consider me to be toxic because I had a political opinion because I wouldn't wear a BLM shirt because I would wear a red hat. And I have to say that my the fact that I wanted to vote on Trump was the thing that sent me to the hospital the most because Kim, my wife, would say, you know, that red hat is small dick energy. Uh, a Scooter Braun would say, hey, you know, uh, you're, um, you know, that's going to mess up your career. Uh, Sakaya Sandifer would say, uh, you don't want to be on the wrong side of history. Uh, Harvey from TMZ would say, just take that hat off. Chris Jenner would say, hey, just take that hat off. So imagine being in an environment where someone as vocal as me is told by every single person around them that they can't say what they believe in and that I was a bad person if I believe something different than all the people in Hollywood. And if you go to the footage of where I'm on stage before I go to the hospital, I say, I would have voted on Trump. And it just felt good to say that after all of Hollywood told me that I couldn't say that. Just like people are trying to tell me I can't have a t-shirt uh, that says white lives matter. I feel like to have the audacity as someone who has uh, been placed in a box as a black entertainer uh, and a, uh, a black musician, a black artist, um, because all these, all these art worlds and design worlds, they'll hire black people all day long as long as they're part of the political agenda. Uh, Adidas, the reason why they hired DC 
who was a very BLM kind of a uh, black employee warden grad who actually, if you look at the and one documentary, they had something going, but they talk about they did bad business with the athletes and they brought in this guy to do bad business and run Pharrell's line and run Beyonce's line and run my line. And he ran it up on them because he really made them think that he could control me. And I gave him a pass for a while because he has a daughter and I would think about my daughter, but he was too disrespectful. He was in front of Uzi talking about, hey, Uzi, you know, we would have took it to the hands. And Uzi, you know, the gang that I ran with and all that. And I sat and I'm just sitting through that. And then all of a sudden I had to light him up and just like, right, I'm, I'm not I'm not taking all that. You know, I'm I'm the next I'm I'm the next in charge. And the way we get in charge is with our factories, like what Sway said. And I don't want nobody on my phone. I'm not accepting nobody on the phone giving me some advice. Give me help, for real. Give me real employees. Give me real factories. Come in and work in that. All these people, you know, they're my friends, but everyone is so afraid. And they should be, because I'm taking over. And that's why I'm in Paris right now. I saw you with uh, Mike. We we spent some time together, and I was impressed because I saw, I saw you working like I've never saw someone working, yes. managing your personal life, your music, uh, not uh, noting bars, cutting some art books, working on your new uh, collection, uh, working with some stylists, and I, w I and there is one scene that was uh, emotional to me. In we had the pigeon in the building. And you mm -hmm. came to talk to the security guy just to let the pigeon out. And it was reminding me this stuff about freedom. Yeah. And we have, to me, it was Kanye. It yeah. was how I see you because... Yeah. Or yeah now. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you're not saying that out of disrespect. Yeah, I'm so happy that you felt that because I couldn't just leave it in the security's hands. This bird needed to fly. This bird needed to be free. So I took out my time to go because I saw the bird like flying into the window. And that's why I say, I don't like mirrors and I don't like glass. Birds fly into glass. We don't need it. We're selfish to society. We're selfish to humanity. We're selfish to the earth in the way that we build just for our selfish purposes or skyscrapers. Skyscrapers are like the Tower of Babel, you know, and the focus is the monasteries to be, to build places of a safe home for sh food, the most important thing to our species. Food, shelter, clothing is a form of shelter. Um, a place where if someone doesn't know if they want to have their child or not, they can have their child, they can have the highest, we will have the highest medical teachers. Also, this is uh, highest, there's a word, there's a way that Gabby had worded it to me that explains how in black America, we just don't have the, the health care that we need to even be able to successfully deliver our babies. Planned Parenthood was made by Margaret Sanger with the KKK to murder black people. And it is really eugenics. And we are in our Holocaust as us, as blacks, as Jews, as the last tribe of G Judah, the 12th tribe, the blood of Christ, because we are Jew also. We And if you ask a Jewish person about uh, their race, they don't say it's a race, they say it's a people. And if we considered ourselves to be more than just a color and more than just a race, but to be a people, we would treat our people and people differently altogether. Last question. Uh, tell me about your kids because every time you... You got 20 seconds, you got to go. Yeah. What's the question? Tell about your kids. I love my kids. I protect my kids. And I'm actually here to still cover and protect their mother. And with my influence, my protection and my stance as a priest of the home will influence so many others in Jesus name. All right. So that was the part two that I let y'all listen to, but it then it went haywire. But that was the ending of how he felt about um, Virgil how you felt about Louis Vuitton, how you felt about if the white, well, if the black people can wear Black Lives Matter and the white people say, yeah, that is true. He felt he needed to turn around and get everybody to wear light, uh, White Lives Matter. So 
both parties can be looking at each other to say both lives matter and they are in agreement with it. But I'm like, Kanye, Asian lives matter. The Native Americans' lives matter. But they're not getting killed on a massive scale. And they're not being threatened. Or at least it's not being reported that they're being threatened like mm-hmm. our young black and um, middle-class men. A middle-aged man, I should say. So, his viewpoints are kind of sh- uh, shrewd and some kind thought-provoking. Thought-provoking. But just the way he delivered it, it got lost in the message he was trying to display. Just like he was saying slavery was a choice and uh, not how it was pent upon us as a race. So, I'm still waiting for that. 30, 40 acres uh, of a mule, too. Give me my land and my mule. Okay, and let me go on about my business. But we know that's never going to happen. Um, and that was basically part two of Kanye's rant. And now I heard the brother done got thrown off of Facebook again. It was it Instagram. I said that Mark Zuckerberg I always be looking at him. <laughs> and when somebody be tapping on his toe, saying... You need to stop Kanye. You need to just do what you need to do because he's using the platform to bully people again. And then they go shut them down. But that's all I got, people, of this particular article. Get down in those comments. Let me know what y'all thought about it. And if you've forgotten, please subscribe and share to my channel. And I will see y'all on the next video. Bye-bye.